Good morning, Twitch. Good morning, Twitch. Good morning, Twitch, on this 02.26.2024. Current time is 0550 a.m. Eastern Time here in upstate New York. That'd be the southern tier of upstate New York where I live and reside. Rich Roberts, Fireman Rich here on the Twitch. Getting a positive start to the day. Hashtag positive start to the day. Hashtag PSTTD. And it wouldn't be a morning coffee if we didn't have our special guest. The morning coffee. <laughs> and it's tasting mighty fine this morning. Mm. Oh my God, that tastes good. Always good, good start. Uh, start of uh, a new week here. I hope everybody had a good weekend. Um, also, I'm over there on X at Fireman Rich, uh, Truth Social at Fireman Rich, Blue Skies at Fireman Rich, Instagram Threads at Fireman Rich, and the real uh, Fireman Rich on the public Facebook. So uh, he, those are the Twitter feeds, and we're getting our day started here as far as a Monday. And I hope everybody again had a good weekend. I it was okay the weekend. It was it was all it was good. It, it wasn't uh, earth shatter. We didn't go anywhere or anything like that. Uh, it, uh, I believe it was cold Saturday, but it was clear blue skies. We had clear blue skies yesterday. Um, the missus even went out and did a, uh, some yard work and stuff like that. And uh, I've been getting into naps. I'm liking the naps. What is that? Oh, that's all on my video. Okay. And um, uh, so I had a good nap yesterday. And uh, I think this week I played a lot of, uh, not Lord of the Rings. I didn't. Didn't do any broadcasting. What did I do for? Uh, I don't even think I logged this weekend. The twenty third. No, I didn't. So uh, what the heck did I do? I have a steno notebook here, and I I keep what I do as far as uh, I'm gonna have to update that. Um, uh, what do we got? Oh, the radar. What do we got on the radar here? Let me bring the radar up. We got some weather activity here. Um, so, did I broadcast? Let me check my Twitter feed. That's why, the, my, my, or X timeline. I still call it Twitter. But it is X. Uh, by all right. It's like me changing over, uh, over there on, uh, the Anchor app. It's now Spotify for podcasters. I finally got that under. Um, I've been watching, uh, there might be an update here. I, I sort of anticipate for Heckle. For Android, which is long awaited, it's been too many years now and stuff. So, uh, but I don't think that's going to be as earth shattering. Oh, I did some. I did a Twitter. Okay, there's our Friday morning and Saturday morning. Yeah, I did a a, a, a real quick uh, X live and talking about. Oh, yeah, talk about that about football. Yeah, I'll, I'll say that for football. And then Sunday. Yeah, Sunday. I just uh, I I played uh, uh, PUBG Battlegrounds on the PC. I did a lot of that. I'm uh, what am I up to? I'm up to level up to what's my level? I guess I wrote it down here. Oh, I'm up to level 58. I, I it's getting harder now, or not harder. It's taking a little bit longer because the uh, Used to be the ratio. You get so many points, you got to you got to get up to like uh, 900 points, and it's like two or three three games at least, three or four games. Now it's up to 1100, so it's like an extra game. So I posted some pictures of the the wins I got yesterday. First thing yesterday morning, I got a number two. Um, I was killed by a polar bear. I came down. I was in a great spot, and I saw this white thing. And I didn't pay attention, and before I knew it. Turned around, it polar bears chasing me in this chasm, and I'm trying to shoot it with my M16, and uh, it just it took me out. And I it happened to be the the guy that uh, was left. He was he got a chicken dinner. I could have bat. I probably would have got killed by the guy. And then I got a number six yesterday, and a couple other number tens and stuff like that. But uh, um, that's what I did. I got to update that log. I forgot that. I was I was lazy this weekend. Very lazy. Lazy uh, weekend as far as and uh, um, yeah, just the aspect there was no no football I guess either you know it's just uh, um, let me see let me bring uh, let me bring up a weather map here um, yeah there we go 
go. But uh, currently here in the southern tier of upstate New York is 36 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, which equates to uh, two degrees Celsius. And um, I'm going to bring up a weather map here of uh, the Northeast. We do have some activity though going on, but it's all to the is it to the west. Yeah. We, well, we got we got a little we got the tail end of it as far as that in Tioga County here. So let me bring up this weather map of New York. Okay, let's see. Let's bring up the weather map, present the weather, share it, and push it to the, uh, the broadcast. Let's see. Scale this down just a tad. I've done this enough where I know where to put it. Oh, let's bring it over here. Let's get it on this side, like right there. And we'll scale that back. There we go. That's better. Okay, so there we go. Um, the currently 36 degrees Fahrenheit here in New York City. Or no, 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 no. Upstate New York. We'll get the New York City temperature in a minute, and uh, uh, that—that's the current uh, current uh, weather here, as far as uh, uh, that goes. And uh, in New York, and let's zoom it down to Tioga County, and there's Tioga County in the middle. It's got some eastern part and uh, the southern part of the county where I'm in. I'm right down in here, this area here. The southern part around Owego, New York. Let's see, can we get Owego in there? There's Owego right there. We got some uh, some cloud covers there. That's the southern tier. We got the Binghamton over this way. Where's Binghamton? Where's Johnson City? Where's Binghamton? It's covered. It's over here, but. Uh, there it is for the most part down in the southern tier right here we've got some weather going on weather activity as far as that goes and uh, like I said it's uh, currently 36 degrees Fahrenheit uh, we got snow showers this morning yeah they, they've, they're to the west of us as you can see right here there you know we're, we're right here where the hand is that's Tioga County right there um, on the um, on the weather map there Hey, good morning, Tina. Tina, good morning. I see it in the chat there. Thank you for being here. Raising my coffee cup to you. Go get your coffee. Our Jersey girl is here. Thank you for being here, Tina. Good morning. Start of a new week, my friend. Um, let's see. Uh, but we, we, we had the snow showers becoming partly cloudy later. High of 56. We're going to get some warm weather this week. Uh, uh, matter of fact, let me see what the 10 day. We got 56 for today. And I was seeing that. And, oh, you got it? Okay, very good. <laughs> um, but, yeah, we, uh, we're looking at 56 today, 57 for Tuesday, 60. 60 degrees on Wednesday. Spring is here, folks. Um, got a family member that uh, talked with the missus this weekend and uh, um, indicating that there's robins here in New York State. Yay, 60s. Yes, exactly, Tina. Um, and then it dips down to 34 on Thursday, but then it goes up to 48, 56, 61 next Sunday, 61, and then we're 60. We're just cruising going into March. So we're gonna, and it felt like March yesterday, I guess. That, that's the thing. It, it did feel like March, uh, um, uh, early March day yesterday. It was nice and clear, beautiful day out yesterday. Uh, but today we got a high of 56, winds light and variable, chance of rent, snow is 50 percent and that's more or less like from the lake effect that's from right this region there's the finger lakes right there that we get that cold air coming down um it comes down this way and it, it it's just uh comes off of uh lake ontario and then you got these lakes here the finger lakes they look small there but believe me they're big the this is like these two lake ontario and lake erie especially it look, they look like oceans when you get you're on the shore they do they really do um, 
My daughter said she saw a, ro a bunch of robins on her. Oh, okay, so they're down there. Is she is she down there in Jersey? With okay, I take it she's down there in Jersey with you. So there's robins in New Jersey. We've got robins. Um, uh, okay, yes. Okay, so got robins down in New Jersey reported. Um, I have a family member that indicates there's uh, robins out in the western part of uh, New York State. I'm going to be looking for them on the walk today when I go for the, the walk with the missus as far as that goes so uh um but uh our world times and temperatures as we speak at the top of the hour at six o'clock uh at one o'clock 1 a.m honolulu time um it's good morning, good morning. one one a.m uh in honolulu it's uh, cloudy and 70 degrees fahrenheit in uh phoenix arizona at uh 401 a.m Phoenix, it's uh, cloudy with some clearing, 64 degrees Fahrenheit. Chicago, Illinois is at 5.01 a.m. currently this morning. 40, uh, clear skies, 43 degrees Fahrenheit. Those are some good temperatures right there. New York City, though, uh, currently uh, cloudy skies at 6.01. It's 6.01 here in the southern tier of upstate New York also. 36 degrees, but I, I imagine they're going to get some warm weather as far as that goes. Across the pond, the Atlantic Ocean to Cork, Ireland. Um, sunny sky, uh, cloudy with some sunny skies, 43 degrees Fahrenheit at 11.01 in Cork. Uh, at 12.01 p.m., manja, manja time in uh, Milan. It's raining, but it's 45 degrees Fahrenheit there. In Kuala Lumpur at 7.01 p.m. early evening, it is um, 90 degrees. Woo, they're getting toasty there. Sunny skies there. Uh, Tokyo, Japan at 8.02 p.m. Clear skies, 45 degrees uh, Fahrenheit in Tokyo. And down in uh, Australia, the great continent and uh, country of Australia, uh, 10.02 p.m. Melbourne at 61 degrees Fahrenheit. Cloudy skies and cloudy skies over in Sydney at 10.02 p.m. in Sydney, 73 degrees Fahrenheit in Sydney. And those are our world times and temperatures as we speak. And you can see New York City, or New York right there. And we go down to Jersey. Let's zoom in to Jersey. That's where uh, Tina's at. You can see we got clear skies down there in Jersey. As far as that goes, uh, there's New Jersey. And uh, let me see. How's that looking? On the... Oh, it's coming in. It's coming in. Okay. Um, and let's see the rest of the country here. The rest of the country... We have, uh, there's, uh, we got some, uh, some sporadic down there in Maryland, North Carolina. We got some, uh, what's it? Oh, this one, they got some rain over in, uh, down, down there near, uh, is that Phoenix? I got some rain in Arizona, just a little north of Tucson. In between Tucson and Phoenix, there's rain. That's always good. They could use the rain. Uh, of course, raining up there in Oregon, Washington State, and Montana, there's some snow. And we go across the pond over to Europe. You can see Ireland. There's nothing going on in Ireland. A little bit up there in, North, in the UK, just a little south. I think that's the border of England and Scotland. But in the UK, they got a little weather. Got some weather over there in uh, northern France. Italy's got some rain, and we're continuing around the world here. Oh, we got some weather in Japan. There's Japan. Looks like they got some snow up there. They, you can you can ski up there in. Uh, um, I've never skied in Japan. I skied in Korea. I skied right up here, just a little north of Seoul, because I was stationed right there. Eleven minute. Uh, airtime from the DMZ as we used to call it and we go down to Australia and they've got a uh, little little weather going in there in uh, uh, northern Queensland as far as that goes and over New Zealand that's a nice little place I heard is to be is New Zealand and we go to the Pacific well, let's check in Hawaii that's where we usually start for our, yeah, they got a little Scattered showers around the island there in uh, Hawaii. So, uh, and we bring it back here.
to the United States as we went around the world for our world times and temperatures. It's just to give a peek here. And um, there we have it. Well, we'll zoom back, back to home here in New York State. And all is good weather-wise. So those are our, that's our weather for the uh, around the world. How's that looking on the big screen? Oh, that's looking pretty good. Okay, yeah. I'm getting, I'm getting a little better at this uh, presenting. Okay, stop sharing that. And uh, let's see. We do have a thought for the day. It's from uh, the, uh, uh, let's see what we got here, from uh, the one of our founding fathers. Do you, I wonder, do you, I, you know, I just think of that. Do you consider this, this gentleman, I guess he is a founding father. He sounded, I guess the founding fathers in the United States are the, all the ones that signed the Declarations of Independence. And uh, that's Benjamin Franklin, one of the founders of the United States. Um, also, uh, um, leader, right, leading, leading, a, let's see, Tina, I just realized my light and home phone, also my charger for calls is off. Oh, you don't have a loss of power. Was it just not plugged in, Tina? <laughs> I just realized my dot light and home phone also partial oh you got a partial okay so you're okay don't drain your battery if you're on your phone must be a fuse okay do you see your neighbors do they have if the lights on near your neighbors or the street lights on that's that's how I tell I always look out that you know there's it, it, you know it's pretty obvious so I, I but I look I always make it a look to the, the neighbors across the street and on either side yeah okay <laughs> so we get partial you don't have it. It's clear down there, so it must be a, a squirrel running on the the power lines there. Um, Benjamin Franklin, scientist, inventor. Oh my, yeah. <laughs> those squirrels, they can. Some of them, they they live dangerously on those power lines. <laughs> um, he was a printer, publisher, and political philosopher. Uh, but his quote and our thought for the day, it's a very positive one, and um, and it goes as follows. Energy and persistence conquer all things. That's that drive to move forward, to do things, to be passionate about something, to do it. Just like I I do this broadcast every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'm passionate about doing it. I like getting up here, talking my, my bit. A good one, yes, I would say so, Tina. Yes, a very good one. Benjamin Franklin's always good. He's always got some good ones. Uh, energy and persistence conquer all things in... Uh, um, sometimes, you know, I didn't have any, uh, uh, energy. Well, I had some energy, but not that much this weekend. I just felt lazy. Sometimes it's good just to be lazy, to recharge the batteries, so to speak. Um, and, uh, that's what the weekends are for is to, to, to order, regroup, relax, de depressurize, as my father would say. Um, uh, but energy and persistence conquer all things. And that's the drive. So we got it. We're starting off this Monday. We're going to be starting off working towards the weekend once again as i like to say so a good one from benjamin franklin energy and persistence conquer all things and they do you, you can accomplish a lot with uh, persistence and uh, and a lot of energy uh let's see our national day let me check the, the broadcast here Let's see, at OBS we got 3662 KBS, and then at Twitch we have 3285. So it's, there's a long, there's a big KBS, the higher numbers at OBS, and the, I call it the resistance, the, the, uh, the resistance, the KBS resistance. It's sort of like water friction in a hose. You got, the water pressure's high here, but it's a little bit lower here. There's friction in between, and that's what we got here. But the uh, broadcast is excellent, and uh, we are doing very good as far as that goes. And uh, let's see what we got here.
gonna just check in a few things here. And let's check this one here. that one what's what's the name of that let's see excuse me for a moment I gotta just check something here real quick Be right back to call my daughter at work. Okay, Tina. Yeah, to let her know about the um, the power outage you have there. As far as you know, that goes. I do believe. Okay, so that one gets a. Uh, We're going to get to the National Day here in a second. I just got to do something real quick as far as... Uh, I'm almost finished here, folks. I'm almost finished. I'm just uh, doing a cleanup on aisle aisle three, and we'll do that with a a, a band, and we're good to go. Um, I'm starting to notice, and um, I'm I'm just spot checked. We had two bots. I wanted to I wanted to take care of 
Um, usually, you have, I, I, I looked afterwards, when you look in um, your chat, you can see who's here and stuff like that. And I had two bots, and uh, um, I ended up uh, taking care of those. I block and ban them. Um, I use, uh, Lore told me about this application. It's called Twitch Insights. And it gives you a Twitch view list of bots. And when you, you, you can see who's, you know, when you look in your chat and you see uh, who's there and there's people that sit back and find, I know who they are. They don't, um, and I've tried it myself. I put my name in and other people that have been here, their names in, and they don't show up on that list. But if these, uh, there's two, uh, two bots that I, you know, they got that weird name and stuff like that. I plug it into a, a pro, a pla, uh, it's on a web, uh, it's called uh, Twitch Insights. Just Google Twitch Insights. And then you go to the, uh, the top, uh, top line, it says all known bots. And, and then it gives you a list. The first field, you, you can put the, it's a second field that you put the name in. And then you see that if it, if it tags and they're online or it pops up that they're offline, but it shows in that bottom list they're a bot, so they automatically. So I'm cleaning up my bots as I go along. So I had a, um, you know, they, 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 well, how can I say they, they're sort of like the bob, bottom feeders. They're fit, they're, uh, they're, I don't know what they're doing. You know, they're not, they're not here to watch. Because you go you, you go back to their channel, they're either broadcasting on their own channel. They're using I don't know they're using the uh, algorithm or something like that to go back to enhance their channel and stuff like that. So if they if it's an, a legitimate bot, it's going to get banned and blocked. I don't like them lingering and stuff like that. So um, I've got that up on the uh, um, uh, on the. Uh, the laptop here as far as uh, just to keep tabs of them and stuff like that so uh, that's what I was doing just to explain to you that uh, I don't like being I don't like having clogged up with uh, oh now we got another one let's see let's check and see what this one is uh, video no we don't want that we want channel and this could be this is going to be an ongoing battle but you know the thing is I'm aware of it something new that uh, since Laura he's our good friend from Norway he told me that uh, you can verify like there's an individual uh, let's see we'll get this one put it in Yeah, you, I usually put it in both. I don't know why. You don't have to. Just the, bat, the bottom one. Okay. Okay, but we, you know, like I say, we do have people that linger as far as that goes. And, um, um, and it's usually after the broadcast is done. Let me check this one again. No, that one's legit. Okay. So, uh, so all those people that are out there, uh, I am using Twitch Insights to check my bots in the chat as far as that goes. And, uh, um, And if you're sitting back there, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna call your name. I know you're a legit person and stuff like that. So it's it's just one of the aspects that uh, you can do on Twitch as far as that goes. But I, I just tag two two bots. They get an automatic because afterwards, I'll look in the chat. To see, you know everybody is gone, but there's some lingering items there, accounts. And if I check them with Insight, more than likely every one of those after the broadcast is. Uh, been over with they're lingering they're sitting there on my in my chat when I'm offline and they're doing something I don't know whatever the bots are, are doing as far as that goes so 
So we're just, um, I'm just starting to get into the practice of doing that. I started that last week after getting in, uh, advised about the insights. Um, what's it called? It's called uh, Twitch Insights. It's a pretty good web page. Uh, let's go to the national, our national day for today. Uh, we have national letter to an elderly person. Hmm. Okay, yeah, Tina, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's just, it's just part of the, the, the maintenance and stuff like that. You know, it's just, uh, they're probably harmless, but uh, now that I'm aware that I can take care of those bots, um, there's some that have been lingering that I had, and um, uh, when you're on other people's uh, broadcasts, you can see those same, I see those same bots. Like if I go into Hal's broadcast, the bots that I've uh, banned, I can see them located on his so that they, they're they're out there and I guess they 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 go out and that brings them that brings the numbers back to their page or something I don't know I make I could be wrong I'm, I don't know I don't fully understand I know they're they're a bot so they're doing something um, but it, it, it it's not apparent here as we're broadcasting but when you see them in the in the chat as far as who's logged uh, who's in the chat there um, it's it's obvious they're why they're sitting there if they're you know and plus after they've been confirmed by this listing they're a bot so what's a bot doing there um and some of these people they have you know thousands of bots work for them or something like that so i don't know uh let's see national letter to an elder of the day okay that's a good one uh national set a good example day that's a good one for the kids national tell a fairy tale i think i like this one we're gonna go with this one because i had some of these last night um for a snack and i still have some left uh we had there was a sale on them when i went shopping with the missus here a few weeks ago when i got you buy one you got pr practically got one for free and that's a bag of pistachios today is national pistachios day uh, February 26th recognizes all things pistachio, and National Pistachio Day is a day to celebrate pistachio, uh, to celebrate. Pistachio lovers, which I am, I love pistachios. I, the only part I don't like is, is you got to open the, the things, and you love them too, Tina? Yeah, they're, they're a good nut. They are a nut. Where a peanut isn't, it's in the ground. They call it a nut, but it's, it's in the ground. A nut comes from a tree, and... Um, uh, pistachio lovers rejoice as they eat their favorite nut all day long. I don't know about all day long, but I had a handful of them last night instead of peanuts watching, uh, um, what was I watching last night? Oh, I was watching, uh, on the American Hero Channel, World, Color of World War II, and then I went over to Fox and I watched The Simpsons and all those, uh, adult cartoons, I guess. I, I transitioned out into the, uh, I went out into the, uh, the, uh, um, living room after the missus went to uh, to watch him out there and I, I I laid I fell asleep I guess she came out to turn the TV off um, but let's see for those who do not eat pistachios buy some and give them to someone who does uh, I, yeah you can do that <laughs> I'll, I'll take them no problem they could be expensive I just a couple weeks ago when I went shopping I looked it's like this is a good buy and she said oh yeah that is so I got I got one you got uh, two bags for the price of one and um, crack, crack them open and eat them up and enjoy them on ice cream. Who doesn't like pistachio ice cream? That's a good ice cream. Um, and your favorite dessert. Na hashtag National Pistachio Day. Pistachios arrived in the United States sometime in the 1880s, but they have been cultivated in the Middle East since biblical times. Yeah, they're good. Yes, yeah, they are good. Um, the pistachio tree grows to about 20 feet, needing little or no rain, and must have high heat. They got to be in uh, high heat areas, so they have them out there in California. Amazingly, in Iran, they claim to have 700-year-old pistachio trees. A new tree takes between seven and 10 years to mature, and bear the the, the nut that it uh, bears. So, um, all pistachio shells are natural. Uh, in color, some companies dye nuts red and green. I like I like the, just a regular pistachio nut. The red, you get the red on your fingers and stuff like that. California produces 300 million pounds of pistachios each year, according to uh, account for 98% of the American uh, uh, production of pistachios. Pistachio shellers typically split naturally when ripe. Uh, the kernels are often eaten whole. 
either fresh or roasted and uh, either salted or unsalted. In the Middle East, people call the pistachio the smiling nut. Yeah, it looks like a smile when you look at that crack. In China, people call the pistachio the happy nut. Okay, <laughs> happy nut. I'm a happy nut. So there we have it, pistachios. They're they're a fun uh, a fun nut to to um, to uh, eat, and I had a handful of them last night. Yeah, you like that one? Lots of laughs. Tina says, "Yeah, I'm a happy nut." <laughs> yeah, that's that we got. I am a happy nut <laughs> on a t-shirt, or just a happy nut. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, let's see. This is the last week of um, of uh, February, except for Friday, which starts uh, the new month. So uh, we will be doing uh, audio podcast on Spotify for podcasters on um, uh, on Feb uh, the Tuesdays and Thursdays. And you know what? Let me go ahead. Let me go ahead and highlight. Let's see if I can bring that up. Let me bring up my. Um, uh, there bring it send it to the there it is that's that's the web page there Spotify just to be uh, talking audio it's about 30 it, I do this type format that I do here Monday Wednesday and Friday but I, I bring in a good story as far as that goes and um, this is uh, the web page here that uh, uh, for my uh, it's uh, podcasters.spotify.com pod but it's fireman rich just go to uh, but I'm on Spotify you can see down here that they have all the uh, available on uh, Amazon music Apple just on these platforms just type in fireman rich and you'll see all the podcasts Amazon music I'm on Apple podcasts Castbox. Google Podcasts. I'm on iHeart. I'm on I if you go to the iHeart page and type in Fireman Rich. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to try that. Let's see. Uh, iHeart. iHeart. Let's see. Let's bring it up. Um, let me share this tab. This is the tab I want to share right here. This is going to go to, okay, so here's the iHeart. If I type in Fireman, um, let me go back. I'll show you what I did. There's Google. I type in iHeart. There's iHeart. And then, uh, you know, get, just go up here to the upper right to get the search and then type in Fireman Rich. Let's see. I've never done this before in iHeart. There it is right there, top results. Dead America, he talks about me as far as so it's, you just hit that and there I am. On, I'm on iHeart. Right there. See that? That's pretty cool. So, um, but going back to the. Uh, but here's the. Uh, this is Sp uh, uh Spotify for podcast. You can do the same thing. Go to Spotify and put in Fireman Rich, and you'll you'll get my my listing. And these are my lists of uh, audio podcasts. It's the Fireman Rich Audio Podcast Morning Coffee, and it's audio only. So I've been doing this for a number of years. This is the old Anchor app, and just to highlight it here, like last week I talked about it. Friday we talked about this uh, this podcast here. And this is how I start out each podcast. You are now on air.
But that's how I start out. The, the three beeps, that's from Audio Boo and uh, You Are On Air. That's from uh, the old Dialogue, which are audio platforms. So just to highlight that um, as far as that goes. So um, that's Tuesday. This Tuesdays and Thursdays, it'll be over there on my my uh, X timeline, Truth Social timeline. Boost. I put the link over there on those social media platforms. So we got a we got a commercial going on right right now. So we'll hold tight for a little bit. So I'm not sure what I'm going to talk about tomorrow. Let me see. Let me scan the uh, queue here. Most of the time, it, they, I, I I bring in a good article uh, about outer space. But last Thursday we talked about a gentleman out there in uh, Oregon. Washington, Washington State, that uh, he saved a family. Yeah, Washington, the Washington Mount, Mount, Mountain. So, let's see. We got a conservative, great uh, conservation story. Well, we might, might do that one tomorrow. Um, we talk about the dinosaurs. Uh, we got the penguin story. Let's see what else we got. We got one. Uh, uh, this tiny moon of Saturn is the smallest case. Is the smallest case of a subsurface ocean even found? Oh, that's interesting. Might do that one. And could go over the top 10 funniest Super Bowl ads of 2024. So there's still, there's still, I don't know, there's, there's some people still talking about uh, 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 football. And then there's a hundred year old D Day veteran. Was ending 48 hours. Was for, ending 48 hours before rest of the world still keeps. There's various. There's a whole queue of uh, different uh, good story articles here and stuff like that. So uh, we'll check that out. One of them tomorrow and Thursday. As far as that goes, and it looks like an interesting one there. See, let's bring up this as far as that goes, and then uh, okay, let's go. Um, history, let's see on this February 26th. Um, uh, let me check something here. Okay, we're good, we're good. Uh, let's see. Singer songwriter Michael Bolton, who sold more than seven, 75 million records, including two number one pop ballads, How Am I Supposed to Live Without You, and eight albums on the top 10 charts, was born in Connecticut back in 1953. So, a happy birthday to Michael Bolton. Um, Let's see, in 1971, I remember this, United Nations proclaimed uh, the vernal equinox as Earth Day. In 1971, let's see, it's the sixth grade, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. Sixth grade, I was in, or no, in 1971, I was in the seventh, or in the sixth grade. Or was I in the fifth grade? No, I think we're, I was in the fifth grade. I was in the fifth grade in 1971 on Earth Day, the very first Earth Day, because I remember um, the school. You remember that, Tina? Yeah, it was a big deal back then. We ended up planting a tree out out on the schoolyard, and um, now that's it's no longer an elementary school. It's a it's a vocational school now because the old right across uh, from the app the elementary school that I went to it was a junior high. Now that's the elementary school. And um, so it was, uh, um, I always remember that tree, Earth Day, that was a fun day. I remember that. I, I believe I was in fifth grade because sixth grade, you went over to the junior high school sixth, for sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. That was considered junior high. And then you went to, uh, uh, well, it would have been a Wego Free Academy as far as that goes uh, in a Wego, here in a Wego. 
Um, but I remember every time I hear Earth Day, the first Earth Day of 1971, I remember that. That was that was a fifth grade. Yeah, we had a fun. That was a fun, fun class. Um, let's see, 18, 1987, the Church of England voted uh, for the ordain of women priests. Okay, that's good. That's that was long overdue. Um, should have been done long before that, I think. Uh, in 2004, the U.S. lifted a 23 ban on travel to Libya, though I don't think I, I would travel over there now. It's a little sketchy <laughs> as far as that goes. Um, the Egyptians, President Mubarak on 2005 ordered multiple candidate elections to be legal. Okay. And let's see. Oh, this was a, this is, we all remember 9-11, but prior to 9-11, um, was February 26, 1993, a truck bomb built by an Islam, Islamic extremist, the terrorists, the bad guys, exploded in the parking garage of the North Tower of the New York World Trade Center, killing six people. That, that was sort of a prelude because they were trying to, they, tr they thought by, bombing it underneath that would bring down the towers and that didn't happen um and um the bomb failed to topple the north tower into the south tower that's what they were trying to do as a terrorist had hope but structure was just uh, uh destroyed in uh nine at 9 11 attack it was eight years later so uh um that was sort of a prelude we you know we should have woke up then but we didn't um, we, but who could have comprehend before 9-11 that uh, you'd have fanatics fly airplanes into buildings and stuff. It just boggles my mind even to this day. Uh, let's see, uh, 1850, 1815 on this day, uh, Napoleon escaped from exile from the island of Elba and head back to France to, uh, to bid a regain of power. In uh, 1904, the United States and Panama proclaimed a treaty between, under which the United States agreed to undertake efforts to build the ship canal across Panama. Um, in 1942, How Green Was My Valley won the Academy Award for Best Picture in 1941, beating out nine films including The Maltese Falcon. And Citizen Kane. I don't remember my green, how green was my valley. Hmm. Uh, 1945, authorities ordered a midnight curfew at nightclubs, bars, and other places of entertainment across the nation. I don't know, they don't say why. And 1952, Prime Minister Winston Churchill announced the British had developed its own atomic bomb. Okay, probably got some of the information from us. <laughs> Um, and that's about it. Oh, here's one for you, uh, Tina, for Jersey in 2000. No, I'm not going to say that. That's that's too political. It's a political one. I'm going to stay away from the stay away from the politics, right? We don't need the politics this early in the morning. Uh, you can watch that on your own. Okay, so there's the uh, the history. Let's let's go ahead and bring up. Uh, yeah, there we go. Lots of laughs. There, that's that's what we think of politics in the morning. Lots of laughs. Let's bring up a uh, hundred years ago today, as far as that goes, and then I'll probably end up taking a little bit of a break because we've been on. How long have we been on for now? Oh, 51 minutes. Okay. I, I started a little early, I guess. So let's go ahead and bring this one up. 100 years ago. Share that. Make sure it's uh, it's muted. Um, and we're going to share it. And there we are. 100 years ago. Bring it in there. I'm gonna wide it out a little bit.
I'm just sizing it up right now. Here we go. Resizing it. There we go. I'm hanging over my chair. I had to plug phone in across. Okay. Do you have power, Tina? Do you have power to the house? Is it a is it is it a power outage and uh, or uh, is it a fuse? Either or. Oh, just a partial outage. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and present this uh, 100 years ago today. Or no, this was Friday. This would be 100 years ago on the 23rd. So this is Friday. There'll be one on tonight for Monday for today, but I'll present that Wednesday. Okay, so here we go. Tonight, we continue our segment on sharing some of Broome County's past. Delivering that news for us now is Broome County historian Roger Luther, brought to you by Ziplaw. hundred years ago today, all roads surrounding this city are now filled with large drifts of snow, making Binghamton practically isolated from neighboring towns. Another storm is on the way. A decision will be made next week on where to put the new Daniel S. Dickinson statue. It'll probably be placed in front of the courthouse steps and is expected to be ready for unveiling on Memorial Day. City has ordered two new trucks and a school bus from the Larrabee Dio Motor Truck Company of Binghamton. Two horses pulling two milk wagons became frightened yesterday and ran wild down Shenango Street in Port Dickinson. They went over a steep embankment, but not a drop of milk was spilled. And finally, an Endicott Johnson bonus check is responsible for a marriage separation. It happened when the wife discovered that her husband lost their bonus check in a gambling place in Johnson City. That was the news 100 years ago. Tonight we continue our segment. Okay, let me get that going. <laughs> Oh, that was funny. Um, let's see. Do we got another one here? Let's see. Yeah, we're going to do that one too, I guess. Um, I'm just bringing up, I'm just bringing up my list right now as far as, uh, what is it? Uh, I, I like the one horses pulling two milk, two milk uh, wagons became frightened yesterday and ran down wild wow, that was like oh no <laughs> uh, the, the check yeah um and then uh, the bonus check oh you like the the bonus check okay the check lots of laugh yeah and endicott johnson bonus check is responsible for a marriage separation you know that was big news back then that was wow oh no <laughs> that's what's fun i like this gentleman that does this um, Friday, when I was, um, I had to read the Wednesday one for uh, the 21st, first. Um, but I just like the music that it sort of gives you that feeling of being back 100 years ago. Um, but yeah, the husband, uh, it happened when the wife discovered that her husband lost a bonus check in a gambling place in Johnson City. So it was just like, he's in the doghouse. <laughs> so that, that's, uh, that's a funny, that is funny as far as that goes. Um, Yes, I love the hundred year. Yeah, that's 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 funny. Uh, um, I've actually used to. Wa I use, I actually watch a little bit more of the Fox News because uh, this is the local Fox News. Okay, they they give the local stories and they're you know it's it's not like watching the national Fox on cable and stuff like that, which can be a, a little um, um, high end, I guess you could say. Um, I do. Let's see. Let me see. There was another article. Let me see if I can bring it up here. Um, because we're on Fox. Let me see if I can bring it up here. This is the motivation one. I, I did this guy last week, and I see that he's in here again. 
yeah this is the motivation guy let me bring this up motivation for uh, Monday motivation 225 but it's I think he got it wrong this is the Monday motivation let, let's bring this one up uh, present and then I'll go on break see how that looks yeah let's bring this this is a good one too I like this guy um, let's see here we go let's turn now to world champion athlete professional strongman inspirational speaker and jiu-jitsu instructor Bill Clark who is your Monday motivation Bill can you talk a little bit about how hard it is to become a champion yeah yeah uh, thank you Alexis um, I'll tell you it, it's very hard right um, the first thing I guess I would start with is this. Your, looks, your lifestyle must match your ambitions. Assuming that someone has the physical talent, mindset, etc., to accomplish what they want, then an entire way of life has to be planned and followed to make that dream come true. The planning probably won't be that difficult, but the adhering to it sure will, especially if those goals are on the high end of the spectrum. See, being average is easy. So a lifestyle pursuant to that won't be hard. But if you're shooting for the top, you can expect some very serious challenges. So for yourself and other professional athletes, it sounds like a pretty tough life. Is it worth it? You know, in all of the years I've been involved in athletics and knowing lots of pros from a wide range of sports, I can only think of one who said it wasn't. For me, it absolutely was. No question. It was worth it. And for all the others I know, outside of the one that I just mentioned, the same is true. And this is one of the biggest reasons why. There's always a price in life. You know, people always talk about the sacrifice and the effort and the cost of doing something, but they never seem to talk about the price of not doing something. Let me tell you, there's always a price. There's a price for doing and there's a price for not doing. For myself and the others I know, when it comes to pursuing excellence, the price, is, the price of doing is a much better deal than not. And by the way, this applies to everyone. You don't have to be a world-class athlete for this to mean something. Here's an example. Let's say you're at a job and they offer uh, some extra training classes that you're quite sure can help lead to a promotion. But the training sessions are after scheduled work day, you're tired, you're hungry, you just want to get home. But instead, you activate the forces of discipline and desire within you and you go to those sessions. There's a price attached to going, but you freely pay it because you're equally aware of the price of not going. You don't want to miss out on the big opportunities, so you endure and you pay that price. Can you think of some of the times when that price might not be worth it? Oh, gosh, yeah, for sure. Just pick any negative activity or habit. Let's use an obvious example, say the obvious weird crack cocaine, okay? The price of doing will be inordinately high and could be forever life-changing. So we ask ourselves, what are we going to get out of doing this and what will or could be the cost? I can't think of anything good coming from the use of crack, but I can think of a whole lot of bad. The cost analysis formula is the same for everyone in every area of life. Just remember, the cost of being great is temporary and the cost of regret could be forever. Have a great week and remember your love. I'm Bill Clark and that's your Monday Motivation. Stay strong in your pursuit of excellence. God bless. So Bill Clark, I, I like presenting that one on, a, on a, uh, let's see, stop sharing, there we go. I like presenting that on a, on a, one, uh, a Monday, I, I started doing presenting him last week, and uh, he seems like a good guy to listen to, as far as that goes. As part of the repertoire, that's all. That those two segments are from Fox News. I have no affiliation. Uh, oh, you like that? Yes, you, you agree with that, Tina? Thank you. That's I I, I think that's a good pre. If he's up there on the uh, uh, on their web page and stuff, but that's from Fox News out of Binghamton, or actually no, they're in Vestal, Vestal, New York. Uh, up there in the Triple Cities area. And I have nothing to do with Fox News or anything like that, but I am a, a consumer of the news, and those are always good uh, motivating. Uh, um, well, it's interesting to see what happened 100 years ago, but that motivating one, uh, the guy is uh, pretty legit, I think, as far as I go. Or else I wouldn't I would put it in the, uh, the, the the square here, as far as that goes, over the, uh, the uh, blab owl. All right, folks, I'm going to take a break. I'm out of coffee. I'm going to get my second cup here, and um, I will be back and uh, just sort of hold tight, uh, hold the fort down, and uh, I will be back.
fresh cup of coffee and uh, we are back as far as uh, that goes and uh, second cup second cup <laughs> you know what Th this screen and the surface 3 are running a little bit delayed but the um, my phone this is my new phone it's a Samsung uh, a 23 uh, 5g I, I only get 4g I, I I monitor I got like three more I got my old phone I just got chat only this is picture and chat then I have this with the uh, was I got three I got uh, the uh, stream manager and uh, also we got an ad starting in three minutes, so I, I and uh, I've got it on the Surface Three too, as far as uh, uh, a tab. So, uh, you know, I got. I just noticed that you know the timing of them, as far as that goes. Tina, I took the time to turn off phone and do daily. Oh, da oh, you do. Oh, you do daily communion. Can you do that as a Catholic? Self. Can you do self communion? Oh wow, I didn't know that. I was raised Catholic. That's why uh, um, I, I just thought it, it, you had that. Oh, that's right. You're a priest. You're you're, but you're not Catholic, though. I don't think, if I recall, I don't. I, I think you, you you said you're you're a priest. To do daily communion, okay. Um, yes, as born again, not now. Oh, okay, okay. I, 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 I've never heard. Well, you know what? Um, um, Buzz Aldrin, before they went out, um, before Neil Armstrong went out onto the moon, they did communion. Uh, a lot of people don't realize this. They, Buzz Aldrin brought. Uh, uh, he's a Catholic. He brought the way. He did. He he had it blessed by the priest. That was one. The astronauts they can bring a special thing up into space that they want. That was one of his special things that he took it to the moon and they had communion. I don't think Neil Armstrong took part, but he he did communion before he went out onto the moon surface, and I thought that was pretty cool. They he did uh, uh, so I, I guess I um, I thought that was a special case and stuff like that. So uh, um, that's pretty interesting. Uh, and uh, all who accept Jesus can do. Oh, okay, okay, that that okay. Like I said, I'm. I still look back at my my rate practical, you know, and um, I, I I didn't realize. So I guess there's a process for that. So, but uh, you saying that it just reminds me of Buzz Aldrin doing uh, uh, Holy Communion up on uh, on the lunar limb before going out onto the moon. So I thought that was that's a that's a pretty you know probably the first time it, you know, it's ever been done, and uh, a lot of people don't realize that 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 took place prior. Uh, to uh, him going out, I think it, they did. He did it before Neil Armstrong went out too, as far as that goes. And uh, um, I just found that it's one of those nice little nuggets of uh, gold from uh, from that uh, first landing on the moon. Of course, the landing of the uh, LM1 from Integ in Integrity Systems, I guess, that landed on the moon um, last week. Uh, it landed on its side. They confirmed it's on its side. It, I guess when it came down, it, it hit a strut and it flipped over. And um, I guess the, it's on the side. I, I forget. They forget. I, it, it's on the panel that I, th I don't think it affects any of the scientific uh, packages. And um, uh, but it's on its side. I've been looking uh, at some YouTube's uh, updates. Uh, no pictures yet. No real pictures yet. Of uh, they they have sort of a. Oh, they. I guess at the top, so it'd give an off off center a three three sixty camera, but it shows it's it's lying on its side, and it's pretty obvious. Um, it's a shame what people are not taught in church. Well, yeah, that's true. But back then, you know, just uh, one of those things. You know, I just remember Catholics. They was like, it's the Catholic way. You can't go outside that. But it's it's a little bit more. Um, people are a lot smarter nowadays. Maybe too smart. Compared to when I was growing up and you were growing up, Tina, uh, we're um, but uh, yeah, it just uh, um, it's probably was taught, but I wasn't listening. <laughs> I 
so it's, in that case, I don't know about uh, history. I, I, I do that with history. If uh, There's some things I've learned about history that I didn't know when I was in high school that I'm like, why aren't they teaching this? And um, uh, which just the more I learn about history, the more uh, I have a passion to, to know about history and stuff like that, because um, it's, it's uh, um, I love reading about history. Um, but I can remember from high school history classes, they, they were, well, Mr. Zalanowski, I had him uh, in uh, American Studies when I was a junior and then a senior was Foreign Studies, China, and Japan. That was interesting. He, he, he gave insight. Uh, they want you to think you have to be special to do. Oh, yeah, that's true. There's some teachers that are like that, yeah. Oh, that coffee tastes good. So um, a little bit about communion. That's pretty interesting. That's interesting stuff. So uh, uh, that's a good way to start the day off, Tina. That, I like that. I like that very much. That's a very good uh, – thank you for sharing that. Um, let's see. Uh, what do we have here? Um, I did talk about, I, I want to talk about, you know, usually I, there's no more football. Okay. There's no football going on. Oh, here we go. This, oh, here we go. I did. Oh, here's the picture. Let me bring this up. We're talking about the, uh, the I am, I am one. And this is from Lockheed Martin space. I posted this, uh, when was the 22nd? This was last Thursday. This is Thursday, probably Thursday evening. Um, hey, Steve, Big Juice, hey, hey. Hey, yo, Rich, okay, Big, Big, Big Juice 900, Steve from Ohio, how you doing? Let me present this. Let me bring up my Twitter feed here. Oh, let's see, this, this, here's a picture of it, as far as it goes from the, the, the lunar, the LM1. And Steve saying good morning to Tina, and Tina saying good morning to Big Juice there, Steve from Ohio. Let me bring this up here, let's just hang with me for just a second here, folks. There it is. There's the picture. Let me get it squared out a little bit. Um, so that's how it landed. You can see it's on its side. That's a side picture of it. Let's see how that works. Does that work a little bit better? Yeah, there's a bigger picture of it. And you can see it's it's on its side as far as that goes. It, uh, it's definitely on its side. And... Um, Yeah, it did land on the moon. It was a successful landing, okay, even though it landed on its side. It didn't crash. It didn't break up or anything like that. It just that when it came down, they had a little problem with uh, some um, some systems on board. They had two two navigational systems, and the one that they were going to... And luckily, they turned them on beforehand because uh, from what I gathered, uh, they... Um, from what I gathered about uh, looking at this... They turned on the navigational systems an hour beforehand. Usually they do it just before landing. If they did it just before landing, the, the take is that this thing would have crashed. So they found out that the first system wasn't working. They had a second system. They were doing a test. They were doing a test. It was a more advanced system, but they wanted to test it, so they threw it on board. So the, the, the new updated one brought her down, but uh, I guess when it came down, it came down at an angle, and when it's got like six struts, one of the struts, I guess, hit hard, and then I guess it flipped on its side. So that's a picture of it right there, as far as that goes. And uh, that's pretty intriguing. The first, it's the first private commercial, uh, because in, uh, Integrity Systems, the, um, their their customer is NASA on this. Okay, this is a this is a privately owned satellite that was shot up uh, using a, a commercial rocket, SpaceX, a Falcon 9, and this is from uh, Lockheed Martin Space. Congratulations to at 
int underscore machines on landing uh, the IM1 Odyssey or Odysseus. It's called Odysseus Lander. Uh, sets the stage for future commercial uh, missions to the moon in support. And this is just uh, the, the tip of the iceberg here, folks. This is going to and uh, the NASA Artemis program. We can't wait to see uh, hashtag Lunar Trailblazer built by us tagged along during the launch. So Lockheed Martin, they, they have some systems on board here. They're, they're, they're well involved in the space. I know that firsthand. I won't go any further on that. Um, so uh, let's see if we can bring this up. I wonder, can this, does this come up? Oh, this is the actual landing. Let's, let's go ahead and listen to this. Let's see, where's the volume? Okay, here we go. All stations, this is uh, Mission All Director. All stations, this is uh, Mission Director on IM-1. Let me restart this. I had to double, I forgot to mute the, the tab. Hang on, here it is. Let's see, this is, uh, this is probably one of, they, they confirmed the landing. All stations, this is uh, Mission Director on IM-1. We're evaluating uh, how we can refine that signal and uh, dial in the pointing for our dishes. What we can confirm, without a doubt, is our equipment is on the surface of the moon and we are transmitting. So, congratulations, IM team. We'll see how much more we can get from that. All stations, this is. Uh... And I ended up doing a broadcast. I broadcast. I started broadcasting just uh, about ten minutes, five, about well, almost five to ten minutes before, before uh, the uh, the landing, as far as that goes. And uh, let's see, uh, Tina, I'm listening. Big Juice. Oh, did it, it land on? Yes, it landed on the moon. Big Juice last Thursday. And Tina, I gotta go. Thank. Okay, Tina, I know you gotta go see uh, Hal. Hal is where? Where's Hal today? Before you go, if you if you're still there, where where's Hal's at? Hal's at where? Where's Hal Massa today? Oh, okay, he's on Facebook. Okay, Hal Massa uh, Media is over there on Facebook. Go to his Twitter feed, and uh, he probably has it posted there. As far as that goes. Okay, we'll tell see you, Tina. Thank you for being here. Have a great day. We'll talk to you later. Thank you. <laughs> so um Oh, I don't want that. Let's go back here. So th there's the landing right there, as far as that goes. And um uh it's on its side and they got telemetry on it as far as that goes. So uh let's see, that was uh last Thursday. And um, let's see, going into, there's Friday's broadcast as far as uh, last Friday. And we went into the weekend and I went right into playing uh, um, PUBG Battlegrounds. I got a, 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 a bunch of, this is one of many on uh, Saturday that I had some uh, top 10 finishes. That was Saturday. And then this is, uh, this is the, uh, Twitter or X Live that I did uh, was this Saturday too? I believe it was. Yeah, twenty fourth. That was Saturday. Uh, but I also put up an article right here on. Uh, I thought I had an article before that with uh, Russ Russell Wilson. Oh, right here. Um, I want to I want to show this this right here because this is football right now. And I'm keeping tabs on this particular story in particular because I like Russell Wilson. I think he's a good quarterback. I think he's a top tier quarterback. His his uh, everybody thinks because he uh, because of what's going on in Denver, and it's not all about Russell Wilson. It's about that team, the the uh, Broncos. Uh, Russell Wilson is a great quarterback. I think he's got a Super Bowl. He's up there. Everybody thinks because he's in his mid 30s that he's over the hill. I think he's still a great quarterback. His stats last this past season uh, equal to Mahomes, who got a Super Bowl. It's just that Russell Wilson is on a team that other team players didn't step up. But this is interesting. They're wondering where he's going to go, and nobody's really given him, uh, uh, you know, as far as my two counterparts are 
really uh, talking about this because I guess they, they, they've written Russell Wilson off. I haven't, and this is why. We got to work on the Steelers. Now, I, if, if, if a little birdie told me, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm a little birdie told me, and I said this many shows ago, if Russell Wilson coming on over there to the Steelers, Cleveland had Deshaun, or the AFC going to be hell. You the do AFC going to be hell. Uh, I think right now I saw on DraftKings the betting favorite is Justin Fields to end up in Pittsburgh. No, he's going to Atlanta. I, I, I always I got, said I, I thought the, he would I be back the a script. big 2.0. We got to work on the Steelers now. I, if, if. So there it is. Chad Johnson says uh, Russell Wilson will be going to the Steelers. And Justin Fields is going to Atlanta. I thought, and I'm, I'm sticking with that one because uh, Justin Fields, I guess everybody has him going to uh, the Steelers because the Steelers are possibly looking for another backup. But here's the article I posted on... Uh, Let's see, will this come up? Let's go ahead and share this. There it is. The former Pro Bowler claims uh, Russell Wilson and Big Ju saying bye to Tina will join Steelers in two, 2004. There he is, Russell Wilson. I think he is still a great quarterback. Um, it just, it just like, um, uh, it's just like the, the young kid there on the New York Jets. He, he's a good quarterback, but he just has a, a team that doesn't have it together. Like, um, like the Kansas City Chiefs or the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, but Russell Wilson is widely expected to part ways with the Denver Broncos ahead of the 2024 NFL free agency. The quarterback's next des destination all but locked into place, according to one former Pro Bowler, the Pittsburgh Steelers. And again, he he and that piece that uh, you saw it right from his mouth. But uh, quote, a little birdie told me, and I said this many times. Russell Wilson comes on over, come on over there to the Steelers, says retired wide receiver Chad Johnson said to Shannon Sharp on uh, Shannon Sharp's Nightcap podcast recently. Cleveland has Des, uh, Denja, uh, Denzel Deshaun Watson, but the AFC is going to be hell. The AFC is going to be hell. Uh, when Shannon Sharp pushed back, suggestion uh, odds makers have Chicago Bears quarterback Justin Fields as the bet favorite to the landing. Oh, what happened? Land with uh, the Steelers. Johnson predicted had a prediction for him. No, he insisted Fields is going to Atlanta. And Atlanta's looking for a uh, quarterback. Um, this isn't the first time Wilson's been linked to the Steelers. As Pittsburgh Brass indicates, it would seek quarterback competitions following an uneven 2023 campaign from former first-round pack pick Kenny Pickett. So they're not happy with Pickett. Head coach Mike Tomlin has been uh, bullish on Pickett potential, however, and the Pittsburgh Post Gazette recently reported the team is isn't interested in adding a quarterback who expects to be the unquestionable number one. Wilson, meanwhile, is technically under contract with Denver. He could still stay at Denver, okay, um, through the 2028. But they've got to pay a lot of money, and that's one thing Broncos don't want to. I think they raised the salary cap, so if they get rid of Wilson, they can get some more players or something like that. But Will, Russell Wilson is still a great quarterback as far as in my opinion. But the Broncos can't dis, uh, designate him a post-June 1 release. To They want to avoid the net negative impact of their 2024 salary cap. Uh, head coach Sean P P Patton, Payton, I had respect for this guy. I don't have respect for him. Hasn't uh, ruled out Wilson returning. If he returns, maybe I can get he can gain some respect. But the, the, this coach, I, I don't really... Um, I, I'd see more of a hothead in this guy. <laughs> I'm one to say that, right? But uh, he's not ruling out Russell Wilson's return, but the quarterback's late year uh, demotion, and, and, and I don't know why he was being demoted. He had the numbers. It's other people on the team. I guess it's just that this coach is very strict as far as that goes. And uh, that's it for that one.
So uh, I wanted to bring that up as far as uh, on the football segment here, um, as far as that goes. And uh, uh, let's see, what do we have? So um, I've tweeted out some uh, some fellow broadcasters there, but they're not giving uh, um, and they're not giving any traction, which uh, I think it's sad because I think it's a it's an interesting story. I think if Russell Russell Wilson, he just he, uh, his first year there after leaving Seattle, he had potential. He he was still doing good up in Seattle, but uh, he ended up leaving Seattle to go to the Broncos. The second year there, he had a, a lot of people don't realize he he had a, a loss of his mentor, a long a lifelong mentor, which rattled his cage probably for the second season, and then his next season. He he had fairly good numbers. He has good numbers. If you look at his his stats, he's a solid quarterback. He needs the tools. Denver did, does not have the tools. Um, so, and I keep on saying that, but it's sort of on deaf ears on my two other uh, fellow broadcasters that I talk football about um, this past uh, season. Um, and I'm going to keep on talking. I'm following this because I find it's interesting. Instead of the same old, okay, uh, what's Kansas City going to go? Mahomes is the greatest. Uh, Super Bowl, Super Bowl. Su the Super Bowl's over with now. It's going into the draft, football. And then uh, was it uh, the end of this next month, February 30th, we have the United Football League. I'll be talking more football. I know some people don't want that, but I like, I like watching football. So I'm going to try and be a little bit more proactive on uh, presenting the United Football League because my team is uh, the St. Louis team. The St. Louis Battle Hawks. Um, that's the team I'm rooting for as far as my favorite team. But Russell Wilson, I'm going to follow that story to see where he ends up. Um, uh, let's see, backtracking to the coaches section there. Uh, Belichick, he's, he's not coaching this year. He's doing something out in Iowa, the University of Iowa, I think, or something. He's doing some conference or something like that. So he's going to probably t sit this year out, um, unless as we get closer to the up. Maybe I don't know. There's no. There's no more opening supposedly. So um, um, it'll be interesting to see. Um, that's sort of a a backstory that nobody's taken a mind to anymore because it's uh, you know. But I'm still following the Russell Wilson quarterback uh, story because I think it's going to be a unique story. I think if he gets another chance, especially if he goes to Pittsburgh, I'll like Pittsburgh again. I like Russell Russell Wilson. I'm on his um, I'm on his side and stuff like that. So uh, um, it'll be interesting to see uh, how that goes. So uh, there's our football segment. Um, let's see. In NBA, I haven't talked about the NBA uh, in, in recently. Uh, let's see, NBA, let's see, what were the games over the weekend? Let's see, what do we have? Uh, starting with Friday, do we have, let's see, no Knicks, no Nets, no Celtics. Okay, going into Saturday, Celtics and Knicks played. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Celtics uh, beat the Knicks 116 to 102, and the Nets lost to the Timberwolves. Uh, 101 to 86. I did watch a few college games. Alabama, I think they lost to uh, Kentucky. That's a big loss because Alabama is highly ranked, and Kentucky just they were they slaughtered them. So that was so getting ready for uh, March Madness coming up here. Uh, let's see for yesterday Sunday. What do we have? We had no no Nets, no Knicks, no Celtics. Uh, but tonight, the Nets will be going against the Grizzlies. And tomorrow, the, Net, the Knicks will be going against the Pelicans. And the 76ers and Celtics are tomorrow night. I'm going to have to watch that game. That's always a good game. That's a classic game. So, um, in the standings, the Celtics are number one. They're seven and a half games ahead. Where did Cleveland come from? Cleveland's number two. In the um, Eastern Conference. And Knicks moved up to four. They're number four. Wow. Okay. Knicks, they're, they're, they're getting hot. Uh, the Nets are still down there at number 11. So that's in the Eastern Conference. In the Western Conference, 
In the Western Conference, we have the Timberwolves and Thunder. They're tied at first. And then the Nuggets are one and a half game out. Clippers, Kings, Suns, Pelicans. Lakers come in number nine. And number 10 is the Warriors. Okay, so they're in the top 10. But I'm just Cleveland. Where did Cleveland come from? Does Cleveland have a team this year? I got I saw them play this weekend, but I didn't think they were that good. They're playing 600 ball. Celtics, of course, playing 789. They're the hot ones. Go Celtics. <laughs> um, but it's good to see the Knicks. They're number four. And the Nets are in the, they're number 11, but uh, they'll make, yeah, it's going to be interesting. My three favorite teams, Celtics, Knicks, and Nets. Okay. If the Nets weren't in Brooklyn, I would say, okay, they're not one of my favorite because they were the Jersey Nets. They're, the Bro they're in Brooklyn, so they're in New York. I like the New York teams. Boston's the exception. I, um, um, Boston, they, they captured my heart when I saw Larry Bird, uh, Parrish, uh, McHale, those guys. And uh, um, I just saw uh, uh, there was an interview by a previous uh, Celtic uh, player talking about Larry Bird and how he was as a player. And it's pretty interesting, interesting stuff. Um, not bad for a white guy. <laughs> he could play. It's a lot of people that think he could play. He could play basketball. He knows basketball. Um, but I think he's he's. I guess he's involved with the Indiana Pacers in the in the front office and stuff. And if it is, if he's not an owner and stuff. But I did see him play up in Boston in the old Boston Garden and uh, with the Celtics during that time. And um, they were a great team. They had a couple championships there and. Uh, um, uh, I like I like the I like the Celtics. They're a great team. I think they're uh, they're one of the best. Um, uh, and the Knicks, I do like the Knicks. If the Knicks got up there and playing against the Celtics, either team I would be rooting for both of them because I like both teams. You know, they're 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 a good basketball team. I I missed that one last night though. I should have watched that. Uh, let's see, what do we have? Do we have anything else on the food and fire? Oh, they're, they're doing something. What's this one? Oh, here's a good one. Let me bring this one up. This is um, um, the local NAACP of Broome County and Tioga County and Binghamton Vets Center honor the Buffalo Soldiers. This is a story that a lot of people don't. Uh, um, this It is Black History Month. And I've been sort of sprinkling things about Black History Month. And a lot of people don't realize that I, I think I, I talked about this in a previous broadcast. Um, the first uh, black African-American baseball player came right here from Binghamton, New York. Look it up. I presented that, I think, in a broadcast uh, a week or so ago. I can't remember when. I'll have to bring that up. Uh, but um, this is about the Buffalo. Oh, let me see if I can bring it up here. Let's talk about this one. This is a good story. This looks like a good story. It's, just, it's history. Uh, it's... it's um, the Buffalo Soldiers. Let me see if I can present this. This will be a good one. Um, present. That's. And there's there's the article. Let's see if that comes up. That comes up. NC NAACP of Broome County, Tioga T County. It's Broome and Tioga County. The county I live in is is Tioga, but Broome is the county to the the east of us. Uh, partnered with the Binghamton Vet Center to honor African American veterans today. Um, today's event spotlights the U.S. Army Buffalo Soldiers and their contributions to the Western Frontier and American National Parks. Okay, in the late 1800s and early 1900s, Buffalo Soldiers protected Yosemite and Sequoia National Parks. 
this was years before the birth of the National Park Service. So uh, um, let's go ahead and listen to this one. This is a good history one. I just spotted this one, so let's see. Does that square up? Okay, here we go. Let me make sure it's uh, muted. Here we go. And the NAACP of Broome and Taylor counties partnered with the Binghamton Vet Center to honor African American veterans. Today's event spotlighted the U.S. Army Buffalo Soldiers and their contributions to the Western Frontier and America's national parks. In the late 1800s and the early 1900s, Buffalo Soldiers protected Yosemite and Sequoia National Parks. This was years before the birth of the National Park Service. Cornell Morris, the director of the Binghamton Vet Center, spoke about his experience at the birthplace of the Buffalo Soldiers and his recognition as an honorary Buffalo Soldier. When I look at the statue, even now, um, I'm just filled with so much pride and humility of the just incredible sacrifices and courage uh, of uh, these American heroes. And so it's just fitting that um, you know, I just pay tribute to the NFCP for allowing us to showcase some of the accomplishments of the uh, American Buffalo Social. July 28th is National Buffalo Soldiers Day. Okay, there we have it. What did she say? She let me bring let me bring up my uh, my tab here. July twenty eighth. So that's this uh, Wednesday. Wednesday is um, National Buffalo Soldier Day. So we already have our national day for the day. Uh, it's, it's national. I got to remember that. Uh, remember that as far as uh, July twenty eighth. That's Wednesday. That's the one we're going to say. We already know what our national day is. <laughs> is national. And they, they, I've, I've read, um, I like reading about history, and it's in the last couple of years I've, I've, I've uh, uh, became acquainted with the Buffalo Soldiers. Unique story, very unique story as far as that goes. Buffalo Soldiers Day. Let me make sure that that happens. That's that's the one we're gonna we're gonna say uh, for. Uh, um, For Wednesday, as far as that goes, so uh, it is. Uh, we're still in February. It's still uh, 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 Black History Month, African Americans' history. It's part of the American history, and um, I'm glad to be uh, uh, sharing some of it. As far as that goes, I um, I wonder if I can find that baseball player again. I'm gonna see where the hell is that. That's in my Twitter feed. Did I post that? Let me go ahead and, oh, here's here's one I did, uh, yeah, Always Remember, Never Forgotten, uh, Major, this is the 22nd, so I did, I think I did talk about this Friday, but let me bring this up again. Share screen, this is on my Twitter feed. And let's see. Okay, there it is. Yeah, this is, um, let's see, how is this? Uh, Let's go ahead and listen to this one. Let's see. Bring this up here. It's muted. Okay, look, I, I guess this is just. This is a posting from the United States Air Force, and it's uh, that's Major, Major um, Charles. Paul was the first member of the famed Red Tails of the 332nd Fighter Group, also known as the Tuskegee, Tuskegee Airmen, sorry if I mispronounced it, um, to shoot down the enemy, shoot down an enemy aircraft and earn the Distinguished Flying Cross. 
and I met these gentlemen. I, I'm not sure. I can't remember if I there was a, there was a function going on here in Tioga County, and I had a chance to meet these guys, and I got their autographs. There was a group of them that were here, and um, uh, I feel very um, honored to have shaken uh, some of these red tail the guys that are famed from the famed red tails, the Tuskegee Airmen. They're a great bunch of guys. Uh, they have some tremendous, I can't, I can't emphasize that enough, tremendous stories um, as far as what they had to endure and stuff like that. So I, uh, my, my highest regards and respect for these gentlemen here. Um, let me see if I can find, I thought I had something in here about the baseball. There's the, the thing about what we had there. Just going down here. Let's see how far is this. That's the. That's February fifteenth. I don't know if it's. Now uh, let me uh, let me check something here. Let me see. I, I I believe it it was on Fox. Let me see if I can bring this up. See news. It's from a couple weeks ago. Hmm. Let me just check something here real quick. I'm gonna check. Um, I did do a YouTube on it. Or if I if I did do it in a broadcast, I would have had it up. Let me see. Um, uh, let's see. Go to your channel. See videos. Okay, it was on uh, the sixteenth. Let's see, the sixteenth. I I presented it in the uh, the Friday morning broadcast on February 16th about I want to represent it okay here we go that was on the 16th so let me see if I can get back to the 16th Bud Fowler that's his name Bud Fowler that's who it is that's the first black African American uh, ball player let me see where's the search here they don't have a search Oh, there it is, Bud Fowler. Let's look up Bud Fowler. Oh, here we go. I got it. I found it. And this is actually, okay, let's bring this up. Uh, present. This is the first first black ball player in Major League Baseball. It wasn't a ma but this is a while back. Let's see, did this come up? Oh no, hang on, we're almost there. <laughs> okay, there we go. There we go. Let me see. Let me get back there. So this is a. I talked about him on the 16th of this month. I think this is a good one because this is a, a lot of people don't realize. Um, let's 
let's see. Bud Fowler. I just want to bring it up on the surface surface three here. Because I think there's two articles. Yeah, okay, so we had one on the 15th and then the 16th. Yeah, it was Binghamton. Bingo, Bud Fowler became to be inducted in the National Baseball Hall of Fame. Binghamton, Bing, Bing, Bud Fowler to be inducted. Um, he's the first black man to ever play organized professional baseball. Bud Fowler, Fowler briefly played uh, the first black play black man to ever play organized uh, baseball. So let's go ahead and uh, listen to this one here. Continue our Black History Month series brought to you by the Broome County Health Department, where we highlight those making a difference in our community, both past and present. This week, Fox 40's Mike White introduces us to a Binghamton legend who made the ultimate impact on and off the field. Athlete, legend, and trailblazer. All words that can be used to describe Binghamton baseball icon Bud Fowler. But nothing ever came easy for the first ever black professional baseball player. He faced racism pretty much wherever he went. And as a result, he didn't stick with any one team for very long. After starting his career in the 1870s, the legendary second baseman, got traded to the Binghamton Bingos in May 1887, where he got off to a slow start before hitting 350 for the team. But after a few months, Fowler's teammates didn't want to play with him because of the color of his skin and brought a petition to the team's owner, leaving the owner in a him or us predicament. The owner caved in and Bud Fowler was no longer on the team and left town all on account of the color of his skin as opposed to his talent. Fowler's exit from Binghamton was the last time he played integrated baseball and one of the last times a player of color played until Jackie Robinson in the 1940s. His story showed that talent was overridden by prejudice. But leaving Binghamton didn't stop Fowler from making a difference, creating traveling baseball teams while touring the country. Created opportunities for other black players and players of color to participate in professional baseball. Fowler is honored for his bravery today, being an enshrined member over in Cooperstown, being inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 2022. The Binghamton Rumble Ponies also dedicated a plaque to him outside of Moravito Stadium back in 2023. In Binghamton, every year we get many, many players from countries all over the world. And learning to just accept and embrace those cultures and the talent they bring, that's important in any walk of life, but especially in baseball. Reporting in Binghamton, Mike White, Fox 40 News. So there he is, Bud Fowler. You know, everybody, I, I was under the impression Jackie Robinson was the first, uh, um, he, he was in the major, the major, major leagues that we, we see today. And, um, but uh, Bud Fowler, he, he's the first African-American black baseball player uh, to play organized ball. Right here, right here in uh, the Southern Tier, Binghamton, New York, okay, and, uh, um, I've just found that very, very interesting as far as from a histor historical standpoint. Um, um, you know, there's, there's a lot, a lot of rich history. And uh, this gentleman right here is in the Baseball Hall of Fame, which is in Cooperstown, which is here in New York, New York State. And um, uh, I, th I just think that's a great story as far as, uh, I did not know that until this year. As far as when this story came across, I go, wow. Because I love baseball, I, you know. I'm all, I was under the impression Jackie Robinson, um, you know, uh, as far as that goes. But uh, just the fact that it was way early that just to be on a team like that, um, I find that amazing. That he was on the team for a short while until the the, the ball players they were 
they were freaking uh, knuckleheads, racists, I guess. They they did just because, you know, did he was he a skilled baseball player? Evidently he was because he was playing ball with them. But uh, uh, I don't know. It just, uh, we need to have that out in the forefront. So uh, a very good story there uh, from Fox. And I, that's actually somewhat the same as what I presented uh, on the Friday the 16th. So um, that's good to to um, talk about. So I love history. History is very, very interesting as far as that goes. Okay, let's see. What do we have on the WBNG side? Do we have anything to talk about? Um, how long have we been on here for now? Now we got we got probably time for one more. Let's see, Walmart making yet another change. Oh, let's talk about Walmart then. They're doing another change, so we'll we'll do that one. Let's see, where where's this on the Surface Three? Go ahead and present this one. I got one more article. <laughs> and this is, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. I'm going to present that. There we go. And this is about Walmart making yet another change you might like. So I'm always interested to see what Walmart's doing. They're, they, let's see, I'll bring this up. Um, if you haven't been to a Walmart store lately, I was at one last week. <laughs> Actually, what? No, Saturday. I, I went through one Saturday to look for a particular item, but it wasn't there. Um, if you haven't been to a Walmart store lately you missed uh missed a lot the biggest well i was just there i didn't see anything what i what i miss let's see the biggest thing has been the the thorough makeover uh that costs walmart nine million to modernize their stores i've, I've noticed that they look a lot better they look a lot better than the shabby places they were uh, but the retail giant is far from being finished rolling out the changes new feature new features new feature planned for Walmart. Walmarts are pretty much everywhere in the U.S. CEO John uh, Funner recently noted in a press release there is nearly 90% 90 90 of the United States population live within 10 miles of, of Walmart. Now that's true for me. I got one that's less than, it's about 10 miles and there's uh, two up there in the Triple Cities area. It's about 20 minutes and then there's another one. So I got like What's that? Four four Walmarts within a 20-minute drive, as far as that goes. 10 to 20-minute drive. Uh, that should make it easy to buy stuff rather quickly. When, and, and the thing is, I also I buy stuff on Walmart online. They're, they're great. They're, it's a good place to shop. Um, makes it easy to buy stuff quickly when shopping. But a lot of things that I can't find, you got to go online. Walmart, however... Uh, uh, thinks it can be better according to the street.com the store has big plans to speed up delivery and online oh I think I talked about this oh yeah we talked about this the website is reported Walmart hopes to open 40 mini post office or parcel stations across the country okay so it's 40 across the country okay I thought that was just in New York I talked about this already okay um the 40 parcels will be opening some in Texas, California, Illinois, Indiana, Florida, Pennsylvania, Maryland, New Jersey, and Connecticut. What, where's New York? New York was supposed to be in there. Because I presented this before, so this is a, it's just a repackaged story. Okay. Well, we'll stop that one there. Okay. I already talked about, but if those are, I thought New York was in there. New Jersey? Yeah, we'll see. I had to take something back to Amazon, and uh, it's supposed to be delivered today. That was the, uh, the uh, I showed the antenna, but it's an, a new antenna for my Bofang. 
and was missing. Let me take the antenna off. That's what's the nice thing about Amazon. I got a, a UPS that's right down the road here, right down from the Walmart in Sayre. But you can see there's a little screw right there. The antenna I had did not have that screw, so I sent it back Saturday. And that's when I went to Walmart to see if I could find a screw like that. Let's see, how does that go in? That goes in there like, like that. Okay, there we go. It's a nice little radio. It, it scans all the, uh, the police and uh, fire channels. Okay, let's see, what else we got? Um, so we already talked about that one. Let me just do a double check here. Um, we got one more story. Let's see from, uh, cause I like WNBF. WNBF is a good channel, radio channel that I listen to. I listen to the, um, uh, uh, the afternoon radio talk shows there on that. Um, let's see. Oh, here we go. I don't know if I talked about I know I talked about this. Yeah, I talked about that already. That's a house for $1,000. So they, they got any updated stories? Uh, you know what? I think that's it. We don't really have any interest. Let's see what's on WBNG. Let's check WBNG. Um, Griffin Park. You know what, I'm going to present, uh, this is on WBNG, this is about the, uh, let's end with this one. We're going to go ahead and, uh, let's see, is this, let's see, that's on WBNG, we'll, we'll end with this one here, let me see. Private U.S. spacecraft is on its on its side on the moon. Let's 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 talk about that one right there. Um, Is there an update? Oh, we'll go with this one here, I guess. Okay, let me go ahead and present. This will be our last one for the for the broadcast here, folks. We'll end on this note because uh, this is a story that I am following. And um, let's see, we will present. Push it to the broadcast, and there it is. Let me make sure she's squared up. So we got uh, private U.S. and it is a private spacecraft. It's a private commercial spacecraft. is on its side of the moon with antenna. Oh, the antennas covered up the companies. Oh, okay, that's why they're not getting any good signal. Okay, all right. Let's go ahead and. Just see what this one has to say bring this into focus there okay and we got volume up make sure we're muted we can confirm without a doubt as our equipment is on the surface of the moon
An historic moment in lunar exploration, a U.S.-made spacecraft landing on the moon for the first time in more than 50 years. Welcome to the moon. I'm very excited about this. Right there. The last time the U.S. landed on the moon was the Apollo 17 mission in 1972. This is quite an emotional feeling to... Uh... To be here. That's the CEO of Intuitive Machines talking before the launch. He's the head of the company that created this robotic explorer named Odysseus. It's the first time a private company has landed a craft on the moon. This is a small little company trying to do something that is very bold. Odysseus is about the size of a phone booth. No crew members were on board. It landed Thursday night on the moon's south pole. None of the Apollo missions have landed in that area. The reason behind this was to explore that part of the moon and see if there's water in the form of ice before NASA sends a crewed mission there in late 2026. NASA paid the company $118 million for this mission. This will have a major impact on future exploration. We've been going to the moon for a while and we need to continue to The spacecraft left Earth February 14th traveling roughly 620,000 miles to get to the moon. Other private companies have attempted to complete this mission, but none of them landed on the moon until Thursday night, making this a giant leap for further moon exploration. I'm Jen Sullivan reporting. Okay, so there we have it. Uh, a little bit uh, more on the, uh, the, the, the lunar lander called... Odysseus and Big Juice says uh, it's going to be high of the 60s here. Oh, that's good to know, Steve. That's good to know as far as uh, the weather there. That's fantastic. We're going to be, what did I say? We're going to be, uh, let me go back here to the weather. We're going to be in the high, I think we're going to hit the 50s today. Yeah, we're going to have a high of 56, so we're right behind you there as far as the weather and stuff. That's cool. Yeah, spring is here. So, um, the private U.S. lunar lander, uh, it is tipped on its side, so I guess it's uh, it's got some antenna communication issues. I didn't. I, the last word I got, it wasn't. So, this when is this article? This is, uh, this came out when? February 23rd so that was last week so uh, uh, we'll have to see see as far as that goes that uh, um, but I'm keep that's another story I'm, I'm trying to keep tabs on as far as that goes and uh, uh, let's see I'll bring this on up here as far as that goes so uh, thing there it's still showing on the uh, the surface three <laughs> okay we're gonna go ahead and exit stage left here folks uh, uh, we had uh, a good broadcast here we've been on for two over two hours two and a half hours and um, this is rich Roberts fireman rich here on uh, on the twitch and uh, you can follow me over there on X at fireman rich over on truth social at fireman rich and uh, over there on Blue Skies at Fireman Rich and Instagram threads at Fireman Rich. On the public Facebook, just look for the real Fireman Rich over there. And just, just Google at Fireman Rich and you'll see where I'm at and stuff. But we're going to get out of here and uh, get our day started um, as far as that goes. I uh, want to say uh, thank you very much for Tina, our Jersey girl, for being here. Great to have you here. She's over listening to Hal Moss right now. Um, I want to say thank you to uh, Big Juice. Big Juice was in the house. Steve from Ohio letting us know that it's going to be 60 degrees Fahrenheit there. And uh, let's see, do we have it? We only had those two. Okay. Of course, we had a couple bots that we had to take care of. <laughs> but. Uh, this is a good start for the new week here, working towards the weekend. And uh, I want to say thank you very much, folks, for being here. Let's see, does that work that way there? Yeah, okay, let me just, I'm double-checking. Yeah, just, Tina from Jersey, 
and Big Jew, Steve, uh, in the chat there uh, for this uh, Monday morning coffee 202.26.2024 at Twitch Broadcast. And uh, again, I'm Rich Roberts, Fireman Rich here, and at Fireman Rich on all those other fine social media platforms. Wishing you have a great Monday. Hashtag positive start to the day. Hashtag PSTDD. And we'll be seeing you Wednesday when we come back for another uh, live broadcast. And you all have a great one. Live life. Have fun. Ciao for now. As always, peace. Take care, folks. Thanks again. And if you're watching this on the replay, I'm sorry. I forgot to mention you on YouTube and, and Rumble. Thank you also. Greatly appreciate it. You all have a great one. Take care.